Welcome back to another video, my brothers. Today's video is titled, Seven Life-Changing Skills. Now, before I dive into the video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. And if you're new here, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ali, and I create self-improvement content specifically for men. So be sure to check out my channel. And if you like any of my videos, make sure you give them a like, and better yet, subscribe down below so you never miss an upload. Let's get straight into it. Number one, ability to see things through. Finishing what you start. Most men are crap at that. They dabble around with five or six things, but they never go all in. They never grab something by the horns and decide, you know what, I ain't getting off. I'm gonna see this thing through until I win. Keyword, until. Okay? There is no, well, gonna give it a shot for a couple of months. Nah, I'm grabbing this thing. Imagine grabbing onto a bull by the horns and saying, I ain't getting off. Either I fucking die or I get a grip on this thing. Like, realistically speaking, you're never really gonna take a bull down with your bare hands. They're incredibly powerful, but you get the fucking point here. The point is, I'm gonna see this thing through until I win. Now, yes, in life, some things are gonna work out, other things aren't, but I mean giving it a proper shot, not fucking around, dipping your toe in, nah, not for me. You can't give something two months and expect to find out whether or not you would be good at it, right? That's not how it works. You've gotta give something years of your life. Do it properly, stop fucking around. Remember what I said in yesterday's video, guys, how you do anything, is how you do everything. If you're that kind of guy who half asses everything, you won't make something of yourself. You are a dabbler. That's what you are. You will never master anything because to master something, it requires immense focus and a sustained period of action. Several years, okay? So that's the first skill. Number two, Public speaking, oh, public speaking is a good one. Okay, for most people, and I've put in brackets here, for most people it's more feared, believe it or not, than death. People would rather die than stand in front of a group of people and talk. And I get it, you know, I was once that guy who stood in front of the room and had to speak to a group of people, five, six, and I was shitting bricks. I know how intimidating it is. You feel like you're being judged. You feel like people are looking right through you, analyzing your every word. And you know, I was bad in the beginning before I was good. You know, Jim Rohn likes to say this and I relate to this very much. The first time I stood up, my mind sat back down. Okay, I didn't know what to do. Blank, everything I prepared for, gone. But when you learn how to speak in front of a group of people, you command respect. People are like, wow, this guy has the balls to stand in front of us and talk about something that he is passionate about. Now you become an asset to an organization if you are able to confidently communicate ideas, projects to other people. For example, if you're in a sales role, a business development role, companies love seeing that. and. If you want to stand out in your company, definitely learn how to speak confidently in front of a group of people. That will get you further ahead than the other guy who's just sat down waiting for someone else to take the, the lead. Be that guy. You're going to be bad in the beginning, but the only way you're going to get better is to repeatedly speak in front of people. That's what I did. You know, in the beginning I was shit, stuttering every second, right? Looking at the ground, hands in my pockets. Over time, I slowed down. I started to breathe because that's one problem that a lot of people don't realize when they're speaking is that they don't breathe. They're rushing to get their words out. But I improved over time through repetition. Okay, so that's the only way you're gonna get, get better, guys, is by repeatedly doing something. Okay, so public speaking is a life-changing skill. Number three, sales. Boy, do I love sales. Young Ali, when he was 18, 19, threw himself into the deep end. My first sales role was a telesales role. Over the phone, pink sheets, no computers. 
I'm not talking as if I'm fucking 50, but the place that I worked at was just raw sales. There was no old IMAX, the latest tech, none of that shit. Pink sheets and an old corded telephone. Literally, Wolf of Wall Street style. Hello, John. That's how it was. And there I was, blasting the phones. We had a target of 300 businesses a day that I had to call, and I was selling telecoms. Now, you can imagine the kind of responses that I would get. Fuck off, stop calling this and that. Which, obviously, in the beginning, is extremely disheartening. You're like, shit, man, this person told me to fuck off. Damn, I feel like I'm bothering people. Now, obviously, this was a cold calling environment. And so you have to come to terms with the fact that some people aren't going to be happy that you called. But it builds character, makes you tougher. It gives you rhino skin, as I like to call it. Because most guys are sensitive. Okay, they don't last in sales environments because they don't like somebody saying something mean. <laughs> Get tougher. Okay, so cold calling will build you up and make you tougher. Presenting. That's something you have to learn as well when you're selling. And so that's why public speaking ties into that a little bit, okay? You have to present your ideas. If you look at some of the biggest companies in the world, the people that own or run the business are usually excellent speakers. Tim Cook, obviously he doesn't own Apple, but he is the CEO. He speaks on behalf of the company. Now, prior to that, it was Steve Jobs, who was the founder of the company. He was the one who was always speaking about the iPhone at every event. Mark Zuckerberg, as much as we might find him to be a weird motherfucker, right? He stands in front of the stage and he talks about what Facebook or Meta, as it's called now, are planning on doing. Okay, the CEO of Google, the speaker. Okay, these individuals are paid to not only problem solve, but to also present the company to be brand ambassadors, to be able to go out there and efficiently and clearly talk about what the company is planning on doing and the direction it's planning on taking. Okay, so presenting in sales is crucial and it could be the make or break between getting a deal over the line or not getting it over the line. How you conduct yourself, how you present the idea. Okay, you gotta make sure that the person that's in front of you understands where you're coming from. And once again, you can only learn that by doing it, okay? Overcoming objections. Uh, so people are going to have questions, right? Some are going to be like, ah, see, we would have loved to have done business with you, but you know, the price for us is just extremely high. You need to learn how to overcome that, okay? And there's many things. The time isn't right, all, all sorts of stuff. So learning how to overcome these objections, in my opinion, is very fun. I like knowing that this deal was tough. It was difficult. Okay, there was a lot of back and forth, but eventually we got it over the line. Okay, so sales, don't run away from it. Because guys, we sell ourselves every day. It's not just about working for a business. You sell yourself to people every day. Why you? You know, you go to an interview. So um, why do you think you're a perfect fit for the role? Now you have to sell yourself. Okay, you find an attractive woman at a coffee shop essentially what you're doing is you're selling yourself to her. And I'm not saying stand there and be like, I am a good person who loves. No, I'm not saying that. But what I mean is the way you carry yourself, your confidence, okay, all of that, you have to make sure that you um, highlight that, showcase that in the best possible way. Okay, that's a form of sales. You know, women like listening to what men say. Okay, your mouthpiece, how do you speak? Are you an eloquent speaker? Are you able to excite her with your words? I'm not saying be a man who just talks and does nothing. No, obviously talk and walk. But you get what I'm trying to say here. Sales is something we all do every day. Whether you work for a company that sells products or not. You sell yourself every day. Number four, networking. Hi, my name is Ali and this is what I do. Okay. I highly encourage young folks to go to networking events. Believe me, sometimes you accelerate your career overnight just because you know the right people. You were at the right place at the right time. You met a guy called John. You met a guy called Mohammed. You met a guy called, I don't know, any, anyone, okay? Sometimes it's just meeting the right guy puts you ahead in life. But obviously you have to be proactive. You have to go out and find these events. And ideally, you know, 
I would say go to varying events, maybe an event on property, an event on trading, and you know, mix it up a little bit, just so that you have a nice selection of people that you can interact with and network with. You know, even if you don't do business with them straight away, it's helpful to have their contact deal details. So in the future, you can reach out. Hey, uh, you know, Jack, I met you at this event two, th uh, two years ago in London. You know, we spoke about X, Y, and Z. It's good to have connections like that. So networking is a life-changing skills skill. Okay, I can't tell you how many people, you know, I've benefited drastically from who I personally sought after. I went to an event and I spoke to them. No one came to me and said, oh, hi, Ali, this is John. No, I went to the event myself. Okay, so be proactive, go out there and network. Don't worry about, what do I say? Just introduce yourself. You know, you're a human being and they are also a human being. I know some people have fancy titles and you're like, shit, you know, this person's really important. Yeah, but so are you. Even if you're not rich yet, you will be. And your attitude is going to impress people. The way you carry yourself, your optimism, your hunger for more. Your ability to take in information, your ability to take on board advice, how coachable you are, all of that makes you an appealing person, okay? Especially when you're dealing with someone who's more successful than you. They want to see, you know, do you have that hunger in you? Are you someone who's just willing to take in info like a sponge, okay? So don't go to networking events and think you're better than everyone else. No, go to an event to seek information to better yourself. Even if somebody is younger than you, five, 10 years younger, they might be better than you in a certain area. Humble your ego and listen, okay? Number five, reading. Now you might be thinking, Ali, it's just opening a book and looking at a bunch of lines. It's not just that. I mean, how many of you now pick up a book and you struggle to complete a page without checking your phone? I know, I'm one of them. I mean, the world of TikTok and YouTube shorts and all that sort of stuff, it, it just distracts you. It's fucked up our attention span. Five seconds and we're like twitching to check our phone. So the ability to sit down and read five, 10, 15 pages without even looking at your phone once, it sounds very simple to do, and in theory it should be, but it's very difficult right now. Okay, so reading, taking on board new information because remember if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room and the beautiful thing about books and i advise you guys to buy hard copy paperback books okay because once again you remove technology from the equation when you have it on your phone or whatever as a pdf you know you'll be reading through the the book flicking through the pages pages okay and then someone will send you a notification Okay, maybe on Instagram or whatever, and you click on it and boom, you forget about reading. So buy the actual physical copy and sit there and, and take on board the information. I was going to say this, you know, some of the books are written by people that dedicated their entire lives to a particular subject matter. And they're selling it to you for what, seven pounds, ten pounds? Okay, nothing. And you can't be cheap with it either. Oh, but it costs ten dollars, twelve dollars. If that's how you think, you'll never become successful because you're cheap. You can't be cheap when it comes to investing in yourself. Go all in. You can never be too informed, okay? Number six, fighting, self-defense, okay? The thing is, learning self-defense is beyond just learning how to throw a punch, how to block a punch. No, it's beyond just that. That's very helpful, of course it is, and the majority of men can't even throw a punch. So just by going into a boxing gym or learning how to do jiu-jitsu, you're ahead of most men, okay? Now which one I would choose? <sighs> boxing is sufficient enough, in my opinion, although blending a bit of both doesn't do any harm, does it? I mean, it's always good to, to know more, right? Eliminate this whole movie mentality that you're gonna be up against five guys and you're gonna just evade a punch from this guy, you know, punch this guy, grab some, it's not like it is in the movie, okay? You should only really fight when you are attacked, okay? In a situation where there's two, three, four, avoid it completely, you know, honestly, because you will get kicked in, you know, there's nothing that you can do. No amount of training will prepare you for five people, okay? You will just get kicked in, mate, 
I'll be honest with you. But one to one, someone punches you, of course, defend yourself, right? But don't also, when you learn how to fight, remember that there's people out there that are stronger than you and more skilled than you at fighting. So you might pick a fight with the wrong guy and get humiliated. So don't think, oh, I've been going boxing for three months, mate. I can beat anyone up. No, okay? Plus, a lot of these boxing coaches and these jujitsu trainers will teach you about discipline, okay? About calming your emotions, being able to problem solve, think, pause. Not just, oh, I want to beat everyone up. No, relax, okay? Also, what it does for you is the camaraderie. It's the environment. You go there, there's other strong men who are oftentimes more experienced than you that will be able to help you out, especially if you're in the early stages. Some of them have been doing it for 10 years, 15 years, you know, and they punch hard and they'll show you, they'll give you some tough love, okay? But fighting is an absolutely important skill which every man should learn. Okay, boxing, like I said, is sufficient enough. Jiu-jitsu, I just like, okay? I just like the whole grappling and all that sort of stuff. That interests me, okay? So for me, I combine both. Um, but yeah, fighting. And finally, dressing well. You don't get a second chance at a first impression, fellas. I get asked this question sometimes when I'm out. Even if I just head out for coffee, I'm wearing a suit. And people often will say things like, oh, what's the occasion? Where are you going? Is it a wedding? No, nope. I'm just going to get some coffee. What? They're confused. Because it's not normal for them to see a handsome motherfucker in a suit who smells good on a Tuesday evening, heading out to get some coffee. Or a Saturday, shall I say. Especially the weekend. Because uh, surely you want to get comfortable over the week. I am comfortable. What makes you think I'm not comfortable? I'm wearing a nice five, $600 suit. What makes you think that I'm not comfortable? If anything, I'm more comfortable than you. Right? People don't know that suits come in different sizes. Well, I say sizes. Come in different fabrics, materials, right? Cuts, some are more relaxed than others, but suits are comfortable. You know, I don't understand this mentality that they're not comfortable. I know a lot of people associate suits with working nine to five, so they see it as a liberating feeling when they go home and take it off. And for me, in fact, I go home and you know, if I'm planning on going out, I'll put on a suit. Okay, especially if I'm going to a nice restaurant, put on a nice suit, spray some nice fragrance and head out. Okay? So dress to impress. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button down below, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.